when we have a contour line of a function, the gradient is locally perpendicular to a tangent of that contour line, and that's a really convenient fact. It means that we can take a gradient to find a perpendicular to a curve, so long as we find a way to write that curve as a contour of some function. For example, imagine I'm in the xy plane, and I want to find a vector perpendicular to the curve specified by xy squared equals 1 at the point where x is 1 and thus y is 1. I can make up a function f of xy that has xy squared equals 1 as one of its level sets. The easiest such function to make up is just let me let f equal xy squared, and then this curve of interest is now the one level set. So if we think about this function, f of x comma y equals xy squared, we can certainly take the partial derivative with respect to x, we can take the partial derivative with respect to y, and we can construct a gradient vector. And now we know that if we have a contour line of this function, the gradient vector is always going to be locally perpendicular to it. Since we're interested in a perpendicular vector to this curve at the point where x is 1 and thus y is 1, we need to substitute those numbers into the gradient vector. And when we do, we get a vector i plus 2j. And so I suppose the direction that I drew is not quite right. Let me fix that. I should be going over 1, up 2. Maybe it's more like that. This was a straightforward method for finding a vector perpendicular to a particular curve at a spot. We, we made up a function of two variables so that the curve of interest was a level curve of that function, and then we went ahead and used the gradient to find the perpendicular. We've just looked at a context of functions of two variables, but now let's think about the context of functions of three variables. Our definitions go through very similarly. So we have a direction vector, it has a magnitude of 1, and it has three components. We have a gradient vector that has the same two components as it did for a function of two variables, and now it has a third component describing how the function changes when the variable z changes. And a directional derivative for this function is very similar. It's still a dot product of now the gradient with three components and the direction vector with three components. This means that the geometric meaning of a directional derivative is preserved for functions of three variables, and specifically, the directional derivative is the magnitude of the gradient times the cosine of the angle between the gradient vector and the direction of interest for the directional derivative. So that still means that the directional derivative is zero in directions that are perpendicular to the gradient vector. The directional derivative, if we're at a point within a level surface, is zero whenever we move in a direction that keeps us within the surface. And so if we're looking for a vector perpendicular to the vector directions that keep us within the surface, we're thinking about the normal vector. And so it's the case that just like when we were thinking about level contour lines for a function of two variables, and the gradient was perpendicular to those, the gradient is perpendicular to level sets of a function of three variables. This is quite convenient. It implies that if we're able to write a surface as a level set of a function of three variables, we can just use the gradient to find a normal vector. And of course, once we find a normal vector, one thing that it's straightforward for us to do with that is use it to find a tangent plane. If we want to find a normal vector to the surface z equals x squared plus y squared, this is a paraboloid, at the point 1, 1, 2, then we could first rewrite this as a level surface of a function of three variables. And so I could rewrite this equation as x squared plus y squared minus z equals 0. This is the 0 level surface of... Um, f of x comma y comma z equals x squared plus y squared minus z. So we've rewritten as a function of three variables. We're interested in the zero level set. I've drawn that right here. And we're specifically interested in a normal vector at the point 1, 1, 2. And so if I compute the gradient of this function at the point 1, 1, 2, 
it should be perpendicular to this surface at that point. So the gradient is grad f, and I need the partial with respect to x, 2xi plus 2yj minus k. And then I need to plug in my point of interest. So grad f at 1, 1, 2 is equal to 2i plus 2j minus k. So this vector, which, um, so I'm going to go over 2, out 2, down 1. This vector is perpendicular to the surface at the point that I identified. And of course, another vector that's perpendicular to the surface is if I just multiply the gradient by negative 1. And so those are two different normal vectors to the surface at this point.